Now each year you hear from an alumni who shares their wonderful story of success. Last year you heard from Rashida Stevens, class of 2004. She has joined us here tonight and she will tell you more. Good evening everyone. Welcome again to the 27th annual Tennis Ball Gala. Last year I had the opportunity to share Achievable Dreams impact on my life and this year I have the distinct pleasure of introducing another dreamer whose life has also been transformed by this awesome organization. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Mr. Isaiah Lucas, class of 2015, and the current president of the Old Dominion University Student Government Association, a position he was not only elected to once, but twice by his peers. Like many of you, I am certainly looking forward to hearing Mr. Lucas's remarks. Good evening. My name is Isaiah Trayvon Lucas. I'm a graduate student in the Masters of Higher Education Leadership, graduate assistant for African American Initiatives, and the very first graduate African American student body president at Old Dominion University, and a future HBCU president. And I have the privilege of serving as your 2019 tennis ball keynote speaker. What do you do when the odds are stacked against you and society continuously tells you no? Who do you turn to when you have a dream but reality pushes it far from you? An achievable dream has been the answer to both of those questions in my life. An achievable dream has been there to help me when I was down and has celebrated with me when I was up. As an alumni of an achievable dream, I have consistently pondered the question, how can I ever pay an achievable dream back for all the program has done for me? A powerful quote by Katherine Ryan Hyde comes to mind. If you can't pay it back, pay it forward. And today marks the day that I pay it forward. The name of my speech is titled Letters. Today I have created four letters that will tell my story. One to myself, one to the program, one to the audience, and one to God. I hope these letters will inspire you to see the importance of giving back to a program that continues to transform the lives of students. A letter to myself. Dear Isaiah, as you stand nervously in front of a crowd of a thousand people, I ask that you not take this opportunity lightly. Today is the day you can share some moments of your life where your test became your testimony. Test one. Do you remember growing up in the projects on Dresden Drive? The norm for your community was if you were a boy, you join a gang, and you do whatever your gang does. You are taught the hood way of doing things. If you want something, you take it. If you don't like someone, you fight them. Gunshots are your alarm clock and are the norm for your community. Isaiah, you passed that test. You didn't allow your surroundings to shape who you are or allow society to define your manhood. Now you are in the process of creating a nonprofit organization, ensuring black men from impoverished areas don't fall through societal cracks. <laughs> Test number two. Do you remember your senior year when you felt like dropping out and giving up? While your peers were sharing their excitement over getting accepted into multiple colleges, you entered into a deep depression, not getting into any of your top schools. My first choice was Old Dominion University, but I was not originally accepted. I then attended Richard Bland College for two years, where I maintained a 3.8 GPA and transferred to Old Dominion University. And now I stand today as a second term student body president for the 89th session of the Student Government Association. Do you remember growing up feeling not good enough? Do you remember feeling like nobody cared about you? Do you remember people in your neighborhoods telling you that you will never be what you want to be? Do you remember the burden on your heart 
and how all the things in your life made you feel. Do you remember your sophomore year of high school as you stood in your room alone with a handful of pills, seconds away from taking your life? My story is that in the 10th grade, I tried to take my life and I was content with dying. I wanted to die, but I had a vision of the third grade Isaiah saying, I am someone special. I am somebody. Believe in yourself. An achievable dream loves me. The same words that I dreaded waking up early in the morning to say every day to the top of my lungs were the same words that saved my life. You passed that test, Isaiah. You understood your worth and decided to continue to chase your dreams. An achievable dream is transforming, changing, and most importantly, saving lives. And that's what this program means to me and many more. In my life, I have overcome a lot, but Achievable Dream allowed me to realize that I am more than my scars, and as a survivor of adversity, I stand before you today. During Achievable Dream, more than 10 years ago today, you asked me to deliver the Martin Luther King Jr. I Have a Dream speech in front of the entire middle and high school. As I stand here today, I realize that an Achievable Dream believed in me, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for believing in the dreams of those with odds stacked against them. Thank you for making the impossible possible. Who would have ever thought a group of students from downtown Newport News would walk the hallways of the White House? I will never forget the experience that this program has offered me. I remember the time when I couldn't afford to have the best of clothes in the ninth grade, and people like Ms. Paulin took me out of class and took me shopping. I remember the time Coach Overby was there to greet me every morning with a smile, despite all of the challenges I faced at home. I remember a time that James, had, James Hayden pushed me to deny the status quo, to be an excelling math student, passing the hardest math classes with A's. I remember teachers like Lori Bluck, Jonathan Lister, Paula Decker, and Ashley Francis, who loved me unconditionally, and the administrators who showered me with the toughest love when I needed it the most. It takes a village to raise a child, and this program, program is doing that. And to Dr. Lee Vreeland, thank you for keeping the dream moving forward. Dear audience, I hope my story gives you a glimpse of what this program means to me and so many people. Over the last couple of weeks, I have worked with the 89th session of the Student Government Association to raise money for this program that is special not only to me, but to many members of the Monarch community. I asked that student body secretary Kayla Hill Jones, Senator Jasmine English, and Vice President Alexander join me on stage. Please greet them with a round of applause. In the words of H. Jackson Brown, Jr., the happiest people are not those getting more, but the happiest people are those giving more. This is how you pay it forward. So I say to the audience today, if you want to transform lives, if you want to change the community, continue to give to an achievable dream. In closing, dear God, thank you for all you have done for me and continue to use me as an instrument of your purpose in my life. Thank you for your time.